this line detached, get it out of here. I don't even care about being nice to it. There's not even brake fluid coming out of there yet. This is 10 millimeter, but due to the amount of rust, it's somewhere down around 8 millimeters. This end is turning nice and easy. Subaru goes the weirdest thing with brake lines. That brake line goes from here, up along the side of the tank, all the way back here, turns around, comes back, and then goes down to here. The other one runs alongside the gas lines and everything to the other side of the car. They put these lines up in where you can't get at them, which is okay if you want to protect them, but when you want to repair them, you can't get at them without pulling the tank. So I'm just going to run a line from there to here, tuck it up in here, and that's going to be all there is to it. Cut this longer than what I need. Be a little bit wasteful, but I don't want to have to play around with this whole roll while I'm doing this.
just like that. Now, I'm trying to not keep myself underneath the car, even though I've got the tire, I've got the jack stand. I just don't like to be underneath that much. Alright, so this is going to have to get bent more. Okay, cool. Now we got that started. Let me start pushing this line up where I want it. Well, hopefully, I didn't crack any of the other lines. Now well, we got the line right here. We got it bent to go around the suspension. Bend this down. Here. About a 90 degree. Force it back up and in. brake line up and out of the way so it won't hit any suspension components. That's pretty good right there. Now I can do a loop and up into there. Bend it too much more than that because then you might kink it. So that's pretty good right about there, right? Now we can push all of this in afterwards. There, just like that. I think that'll work. Now we need an end. Always put your end on first. gonna flare this right about here yeah let's see where do we want that we want it right about there sent so that the line is centered and that isn't hitting anything and rub it back and forth 
right there to make a mark. Don't know why, but I did it anyway. I can't see the mark. But we determined that it was somewhere around this height. go any lower than this I won't be able to get the flaring tool in there and all brake lines aren't a hell of a lot of fun to watch are they so I'll be back in a moment trim this out So correct your angles and stuff with this at this moment. All right, now wish this thing had a detent in the middle of it. Sometimes it's easier to prefab the line outside the car. Sometimes it's easier to just say to heck with it and do it right inside the car. Hopefully, this will fix our re remedy our problem. It's either that or while we're bleeding the brake lines out, there'll most likely be another blowout. All right, that looked good. Uh, some reason that doesn't look very good. of it. I didn't squash it down. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I did. Okay. It's double flaring. That's cool. Okay. Now I can pin that down in. Positioned. It's about where I want it. Looks pretty good. Let's see what happens. did good. You don't have to fight like crazy with these threads to get them started like I'm doing now. It's a little bit off. There we go. They're a little bit off center and they won't thread. Now, it's striking against what here? 
because that's what we don't want. We don't want things vibrating against anything. There we go. Nothing's touching. Good. And yes, 10 millimeter, but I'm not. Well, I might crank it down this way. The heck with it. Who cares? See that bracket flexing? I'm gonna go grab my 10 millimeter because I don't want to break the bracket. Now the reason I'm doing this is just so that I can keep this bracket from flexing. I want to tighten up the crush, just tighten up the hold. As soon as that freaking nut strips, I think we're done. Good and tight. Now let's see what happens when I push the brake pedal down. Actually, I just thought of something. Just in case it blows. Thought it might look good on camera. Let's get my stuff out of the way that I don't want to get soaking wet. Alright, let's see what happens. I can't exactly say I feel a wonderful pedal, but I also don't see anything dripping. Right, nothing there. I'm going to turn you upside down and let you take a look for me in there. Oh, poor camera. There. That look good up there now. It doesn't look like it's dripping to me. Yay. Now let's go fill the reservoir. Makes it a lot easier to see what's in here. Do this before I take the cap off. Alrighty. She's empty. And a little filter in the top. Make sure your fingers are super, super clean. This little filter right here. I'm going to lift this up and out. I already had it out, so it makes it easier to fill. Make sure you do not get any contaminants in it. Set it someplace really safe. Right there is going to be good. Make sure that you're using clean brake fluid, because the last thing you want to do is dump anything in there, anything in there besides brake fluid. Now this vehicle is equipped with ABS. We probably have a lot of air sitting in the ABS unit now. So we're probably going to have to use the scan tool to activate the ABS unit. Get any air out of there that might be trapped. Put the cap back on just to keep it from splashing anywhere. Not even an 
eighth of an inch. All right, and then we'll get the bleeder open on the wheel. Ah, I feel the fluid getting into the brake cylinder now. Probably got most of the air out of there already. So here we got you an angle where we can see what's going on. I don't see anything coming out of there. Too bad I wasn't recording that. <laughs> Popped the hose right up out of the, the drain. And what's coming out of there, that stuff looks gross. Yuck. Oh. Yeah. Tighten that back up to see how this brake pedal feels. We have a pedal. But we also have some air in the lines somewhere, probably in one of the other wheels. So now we're going to have to start the uh, full brake bleed. That's going to be fun. I have two jack stands. With all four wheels off. <laughs> all right. Back in a moment. Now what we're going to do is beginning with the wheel that's the furthest away from the ABS bleed that one first and then the other back one and then we're going to come up to the front and we're going to start with the wheel that's furthest away from the ABS in the front and yes I know that tire is awful he is also aware he's also buying graded tires the car that's going to last one more year poor car the rest of this car is beautiful Trick is going to be getting the rest of these bleeder screws loosened up without breaking them. And I've developed a technique that seems to work fairly well. Get the 10 millimeter on there. It might not work for very long because it's already sloppy because of the rust. But we need to hit this with something. And a hammer's a little heavy. I'm beating the daylights out of my ratchet all the time. So what I'm going to use today is this very, very, very badly beaten up extension. Um, this is what they call a sacrificial extension and we're gonna tap on this until it moves we are not going to force it because if we do it will probably break but I found that by whacking it like this the shock breaks it loose probably could use some penetrating oil on it first too and again I don't know if the camera can even hear me over the banging but uh, probably should put some penetrating oil on this There we go. And we already have brown fluid coming out. Okay, we got that one loosened up. Let's go do the other one. Here we are again on the other side. This one's going to be a little trickier. Because I'm hitting straight, straight towards myself, but... There we go. So there was a little air in there too. Huh. Alrighty. Now we've got all of the bleed screws loosened up. Let's get bleeding. Now because the ABS unit is right here over on this side of the car, we're going to be doing the right rear, or in this case left rear first. We're going to be taking care of this one. I think in the near future, I'm going to see if I can get some clear hose to do this with. Make it a lot easier for you folks. 
to see what in the world is going on here. But I work that little hose on there nice and snug. I'm gonna open the bleach screw up. Now I'm doing this all by myself, no helper. I do have a pressure bleeder that I can pressurize the master cylinder with. Uh, it's not with me at the moment, but this isn't one of those jobs where I'm gonna need it, I believe. So let's see what happens. I wish I could see the fluid coming out though. You can hear the air going through. Make sure the master cylinder is full. Now let's see what we got coming out of this now. Clear brake fluid's coming out, which means we've already worked it all the way through. So we can go ahead and tighten that one down. And move over to the passenger side. Just turned just enough. I'll be able to hear if there's any air going through there. I can honestly say I don't think we have any air trapped in the ABS at all because I have a very, very, very stiff pedal right now. Clear fluid coming out. Which means there's no air bubbles left in there. Go ahead and tighten that one down. These are only about eight foot pounds. You gotta go real light on them, otherwise you'll break them off or never be able to get them back out again and break them off. Now we're on the driver's side front, opposite the ABS. Sure, your master cylinder is full. What do we got coming out of this? It's still a little yucky. We're gonna work some more through there. We're all done bleeding this side now. Get that tightened up. Pull the hose off. Now if you have a little rubber caps on them, put a little bit of silicone grease inside the cap, put the cap back on. It'll help keep these from getting rusted up on the inside, which will lock them up on you. This car didn't have any of them. And then last but not least, we got this one over here. Brown fluid. Mm. 
Now, because this vehicle has been sitting for a really long time, and this is just for the purposes of showing you guys something. Let's see, what can you see here? You can see this. I'm going to set that right there. And I'm going to take this hose, and I'm going to set the hose right there. I'm going to go pump the brake pedal once or twice. Probably help if I opened the bleeder. There we go. So now we got some bubbles coming up down there. Let's see. You guys can see that fluid that's coming out of there. That's what happens to the fluid when it sits in here for years. Two full depresses of the brake pedal. That fluid is nasty. What happens is the fluid collects water. The wire works its way down through. Your caliper gets hot. It boils the fluid. It separates the water out of it. You get chemicals. Just all sorts of bad stuff happens. This happens also because of the inside of your lines getting corroded. And just this is why you want to change your brake fluid out every four years. Now back to the actual bleeding. You think that right there would make a really good uh, thumbnail? <clears throat> oh yeah, let's, I'll show you something else too that I just discovered tip this down so you can see not only was that fluid absolutely disgusting but look what's in in the fluid see all those little particles that's called how to wreck your brake system <laughs> real quick he is so fortunate that at the moment he doesn't have anything leaking I am now super satisfied with the way these brake pedal feels, or this brake pedal pedal feels. So let's see what we got coming out. We got clear fluid or not. Oh yeah, that's coming out of there nice and clear now. <laughs> and I just got the brake fluid from that bag off all over my hands. Right. Double check the way that brake pedal feels again. The hose out of here. That's the cleanest it's been in years. Top that off. Put the little screen back in. Make sure your screen is in. Push all the way to the bottom. What I also do is I punch a large hole and a small hole so that I can pour it without it glugging. I have to go slow now because I put the screen back in and it's got a purge. Make sure you got the whole area all wiped up. There's no 
brake fluid sitting on anything. I don't know if you guys can see from over there all that is blistering down here. This tells me that this master cylinder may be compromised. It might be starting to leak and it's coming down here or it's just been filled a lot and spilled a lot. But I'll let the customer know even though in this car it probably doesn't even matter anymore. Go ahead and get these front wheels put back on. Make sure the bleed screws are nice and tight. Well, I already did, but I double check. If I was a garage, I wouldn't be able to let this go. I still don't like the idea, but he doesn't have a spare to put on it. Too much overthinking it, I think, but people's lives are on the line here. This, this tire should never, never be on the road. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Okay, that's the spare. It's the only car, the only tire on the whole car that's got meat on it. These are a little more difficult because you can't see the lug nuts through the spaces in the rim. And get the front end back down off the jack, tighten up the front lug nuts. Scraping noises, yay! Step on your tools, bad things happen. Tell that I've been in there. And my battery's dying, so I'm gonna have to wrap it up here. If you guys like this one, felt this one helpful, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I want to see some comments on that front tire. And don't forget, you got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches.
loose that turret. Broke loose kind of easy. And of course it's going to break right here. Okay. Snap right off. 